Six years ago, who would have thought we'd be standing here today? You're the girl that I could not stand in high school, and now you're the girl I can't stand to be apart from. We started this journey together at 18, both young and unsure about the future that was in front of us. But now, the future has never been more clear. Standing here today with our friends and family, I want to make you a promise. I promise you that I'll always put you first. I may stumble and fall, but I'll always be there to pick up the pieces with you. Through the ups, the downs, the smiles, and the frowns, you will always be the one I choose. I can't read my hand right now. <laughs> I can't cook like your mama, but I'll always provide for you and put food on the table. When our kids grow up and stand where we are today, I'm going to be there holding your hand. And when we're old and gray, and we're sitting there on our chairs, I'll look at you and know you're the girl I've always loved. Years ago, I was telling one of my close friends about mine and my longtime boyfriend's unconventional start to our relationship. And she used the term high school sour hearts. A mutual friend wanted to set us up. We decided to walk past each other in true teenager form took one look at each other and said, nope. <laughs> Years later, I ran a marathon and who handed me my after run snack, but Cody Fox. And a year later, we reconnected in a whole different state. You've taught me to be patient and to look at the positive aspects of life. You showed me that there's life after 9 p.m. It should be spontaneous. <laughs> but most importantly, you have showed me what it feels like to be truly loved by a man. You are my supporter, my provider, my confidant and best friend. You always put me first and there's not a day that goes by that I doubt that I'm loved by you. I love you with everything that I am and I consider myself to be the luckiest girl in the world to become your wife. God, you're beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna spin around so I can see you. <laughs> you look so good. Let's go get married. Do you wanna do your vows first? Because mine are probably better. I don't wanna knock them out of the park. Are you kidding me? <laughs> me? Now, you honestly could not have picked a better person for Lauren than Cody. Our family has always joked that somebody would have to be paid to handle Lauren, but here he came, fresh, lively, head over heels, naive. Seeing my sister as happy as Cody makes her and witnessing him absorb the borderline emotional abuse without a wince has been a privilege. <laughs> he matches her quirks, he calms her crazy, and he supports her to the end of the circle. You know, Cody and I met a few years ago, but when we did, it was an instant connection. We'd known each other for a little while. He and I went through a lot of rough days. But as we're sitting there in this nasty little place in the middle of Afghanistan, he's gone on for about 30 minutes straight, for about the fourth day straight, talking about this girl back home that he can't live without. And that's when I told him, I knew, and I told him then, you need to marry that girl. The only thing we have to say is our unconditional love, uplifting support, and wishing you all the happiness the rest of your days. Because were he my own flesh and blood, God couldn't have given me a better brother. And when we look down that aisle today, and we saw that angel walking down the aisle. God couldn't have given him a better wife. So today, it's about no one but you and your everlasting love and happiness. Bride and groom.
Cody and Lauren, by the power invested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Cody, you may now kiss the bride. Yeah.